trillion million billion trillions of orbiting snowballs orbiting snowballs orbiting snowballs a flat fact a flat fact g'day there welcome to my channel a flat fact waking up from the delusions one by one I'm going to point out some things I noticed in this classical video of Admiral Richard Byrd in his guest appearance on the Long Jeans Chronoscope in the 1950s. At the end of this video you can decide if Byrd lied, was he delusional or did he tell the truth, or was he given a dialogue by his superiors. The Long Jeans Chronoscope interview has been copied and pasted into many Flat Earth videos. Some use it to show the possibility of more land beyond the Antarctica South Pole, and some use it to show the possibility of an ice wall. Most researchers tend to focus on what Admiral Byrd says about the South Pole and ignore what he says about the North Pole, and also ignore the host's comments. Consider the time as the 1950s. The Second World War had ended several years before. The United States had been in lockdown under national security since the beginning of the war. Yet, here we have Admiral Richard Byrd on public television giving witness testimony of the North and the South Pole. And his testimony is absolutely contradictory to the science and geology of the 1950s as well as it is today. Rear Admiral Richard Evelyn Byrd Jr was born on October the 25th 1888 and he passed on March the 11th 1957. The Long Jean Chronoscope aired on CBS television from 1951 to 1955. Therefore Admiral Byrd was around 65 to 67 years old when he was interviewed in this archival clip. Richard Byrd died a few years after this interview. Bird lays claim to the first flight ever to the North Pole in 1926. Whether he actually went there at all in 1926 is under debate. His claim being under debate means he may have lied once, and maybe lied under orders. It is a shame since the camera had been invented he did not take one with him on this historical North Pole voyage. Kind of similar to the guys who landed on the moon not turning the camera around and taking a photograph of the Earth from the moon. I'm only going to dissect the first few minutes of the clip. Admiral Byrd is interviewed about his explorations to the North and South Pole and about his 1947 military operation to Antarctica, codename High Jump. Again, the statement Byrd makes about the North Pole are contrary to the science of the day. The statement Byrd makes about the South Pole assumes he has superpowers, as you will see. Let's listen to the first bit. Is Admiral Richard E. Byrd. The North Pole used to be a no man's land, but uh, these are the days when, by buying a ticket on a commercial airliner, you can fly across the North Pole and drink a cocktail at the same time. Yet only three score or more years ago, about 35 years ago, our guest tonight found out whether there was any land north of the North American continent. He made that first discovery flight, and I must say that Admiral Byrd, our guest tonight, is not only our greatest living explorer, but he's been an inspiration to countless Americans. Admiral Byrd, you've been to both the North Pole and the South Pole. Is there any unexplored land left on this earth that might appeal to adventurous young Americans? Uh, yes, there is. And not up around the North Pole, because it's getting crowded up there now, because they find out it's really usable, not only to live in, but militarily. But strangely enough, there's left in the world today an area as big as the United States that's never been seen by a human being. And that's beyond the pole on the other side of the South Pole from Middle America. And it's, uh, I think it's quite astonishing that there should be an area as big as that, unexplored. Well, this is a tremendous So challenge. there's a lot of adventure left down at the bottom of the world. Well, Admiral, do you hope to see that? I do. So the host said, these are the days with the price of a plane ticket, you can drink a cocktail while flying over the North Pole. Then the host asked him, is there any land left unexplored on this earth? He answers yes, 
but with a but but not up around the North Pole because it's getting crowded up there now because they find out it's really usable not only to live in but militarily then in the interview Bird quickly diverts attention to the South Pole but strangely enough there's left in the world today an area as big as the United States that's never been seen by a human being and that's beyond the pole on the other side of the South Pole from Middle America and I think it's quite astonishing that there should be an area as big as that unexplored so there's still a lot of adventure left down at the bottom of the world yes Mr Bird a lot of adventure left down the bottom of the world but no point going north and he states an area as big as the United States that's never been seen see why I suggested superpowers he says it has never been seen how could bird determine this unseen land is as big as the United States if no one has ever seen it in summary we have bird stating that the North Pole has people living there and the military is very interested we have Bird also stating that there is land beyond Antarctica that hasn't been seen and on a globe model the land on the other side of Antarctica is Australia and I'm pretty sure Australia had been long discovered by the 1950s. The military is under a chain of command and secrecy. The information shared from the military is the information the military wants released and they will use the media. If you've stopped believing in the global lie, do you really think you have enough evidence to formulate a rational belief as to where you actually live? Is the term, I believe, a term we should still be using? I decided for myself, no. I chose now to use the term, I think. Could plan A be a globe and plan B be a snow globe? the long con, the snow globe inserted into history two to three hundred years ago. So in the 1950s on public television, as well as telling information about the North and South Pole that appears contrary, we have Bird talking about a secret military operation in the Antarctica codename Operation High Jump, which only took place some years before in 1947. Another military man that comes to mind is Captain James Cook. He is romanticised as an intrepid explorer. Cook was military and under orders from the Queen. Oh, let's not forget the secret or not so secret Operation Fishbowl in 1962. This was a series of high altitude nuclear tests or just bombing tests. A lot of secret military escapades that the public seem to know about. I'm sure with the amount of actual secrecy and no-go zones in the North Pole and Antarctica, there is much, much more information to be unveiled. People are sick of the lies and secrecy, and so much that is done now is just so obvious. Richard Byrd was an admiral, high-ranking, long-term military. I do not think his testimony in the Long Jeans Chronoscope interview could be considered a flat fact or much else that Bird has written or spoken about via the media. So, what do you think? Do you think Bird is a credible source? Did Bird lie? Was he delusional? Or were his words spoken on public television under direct orders from his superiors? Or did Bird tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Thanks for listening.